Yeah. Hi everyone, uh, good afternoon. This is uh, Gerardo from Bayasur. We will start the webinar in one minute. We are just waiting for a few more participants. So whenever you tell me, Gerardo, we can start. Yeah. I think we can maybe, we can start now. Um, okay. Then uh, good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to the third uh, community workshop we are organizing as part of the, of the Connecting Nature Enterprise uh, platform. My name is Antonia Lorenzo. I am the CEO of Payazur. Uh, is a connecting partner, uh, connecting nation partner, and actually the industry leader of the community of practice on a nature-based solution for water management. Together with Gerardo, uh, we will be moderating this uh, webinar uh, for the next hour. Let me inform you that this session is being recorded and the video will be available also on the platform uh, within the coming days. For today's uh, webinar, uh, no, yeah, uh, yeah, sorry. For today's webinar, we count uh, with the participation of three innovative and successful uh, members of the community, our community of natural based solutions and water management. They will be shared today with all of us uh, their experience on different research and development programs and projects and the benefit and opportunities uh, from their participation. But before to give the floor to them, uh, my colleague Gerardo will give you a short introduction about the Connecting Nature Enterprise platform and the reason why we have chosen this um, specific topic for the webinar of today. Also, I would like to remind the audience that they can ask questions uh, directly in the chat of the webinar. We will take them, uh, I mean, some of them, depending on the time, and as our speaker uh, after each uh, presentation. So, Gerardo, please. Go ahead. Thank you, Antonia. Um, well, so as you might know, uh, the Connecting Nature uh, project has developed an enterprise platform, which is a global database that connects uh, directly the market demand with suppliers of nature-based solutions. And this is what we understand by nature-based enterprises and organizations. And at the heart of the platform, there are communities of interest moderated by industry leaders like us today by Azul. And since October 2020, there are almost uh, 1,900 uh, users and more than 330 enterprises and organizations uh, registered. The platform offers uh, the possibility to find any nature-based enterprise registered. And you can filter by country, by city, and the type of product or service that uh, you are requesting. Uh, users can post uh, challenges like a search for ideas or simple questions looking for an answer from other members. At the same time, it is possible to post uh, opportunities such as tenders, uh, funding opportunities, uh, business and collaborative opportunities, etc. And you will get a notification every time a new opportunity is uh, posted. You will also be informed about interesting news and events. And recently, there is a new section with resources available, such as research tools, guidebooks, and so on, which are related to nature-based economy and, and enterprises. As we mentioned before, there are 10 communities of practice at the moment. Each of them is moderated by an industry leader or ambassador that will organize community workshops uh, like this one today. Um, but we also uh, raise awareness and good practices. Uh, we share opportunities among the community members, etc. For instance, um, our community for water management has already 54 uh, MBEs registered from 17 different countries around the world and more than 500 users uh, registered at the moment. 
As a member of the community, you can complete the profile of your organization and advertise your products and services, your case studies, testimonials, uh, etc. And just to give you a bit of background about today's topic, um, in February last year, we organized uh, our first workshop and we ran a survey among the nature-based enterprises uh, included in the audience. So we got very useful feedback about the challenges and the obstacles that they were facing to grow as an organization working with uh, nature-based solutions. So you can see in the graph that almost half of the MBEs agreed that there is a lack of networking and cooperation opportunities with other organizations in the sector. Um, they also found a lack of evidence and effectiveness of their products and services. And also very importantly, a lack of funding and financial support to carry out research and development activities. So uh, with today's webinar, we intend to give uh, to give you some good examples of uh, successful uh, MBEs overcoming some of these challenges, thanks to the participation in international uh, European funded projects. And with no further delay, I would like to introduce our first uh, speaker, uh, Marco Hartel, joining from, from Austria. Um, he is a PhD and ecological engineer working at uh, Alchemia Nova one of the MBEs uh, registered in our community. Uh, Marco, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thanks for the invitation. Glad to be here. All right. Uh, nice to have you here. Um, please, the floor is yours. Uh, you can share your screen. Okay. And proceed with the presentation. So, I hope you can see my screen. Yes. Exactly. All right. Super. Good then. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for being here. My name is Marco Hartl, and uh, as Gerardo said, I'm working at Alchemia Nova in Vienna. And now we're talking about our EU project. So, um, Alchemia Nova, um, we are mostly working on circular solutions for. Uh, bringing more circularity into water and nutrient cycles. We are focused on nature-based solutions, and we also look into uh, finding participatory approaches in order to strengthen the, 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 the social involvement of stakeholders and locals. Um, probably our most prominent product, so to say, is our vert eco vertical green wall. Um, so um, it's a stainless steel basins which are kind of like subsurface flow horizontally, uh, subsurface horizontal flow constructed for treatment wetland systems. So the water goes in on one side and then flows through horizontally. It's also aerated. Uh, it has a mixture of substrates and um, we tested it a lot and already applying it for the treatment of gray water in order to be able to then re reuse the treated water in toilets or for irrigation or as washing water. Um, this system, is modular in its size and also in the plants used and the substrate and has won multiple awards. Um, one example, or actually the first application, was uh, in Loret del Mar in Spain. It's uh, on the coast, it's a tourist town. There it is in a hotel lobby and it's treating the gray water from a hotel. And uh, then the treated water is used for toilet flushing. That was an EU project called Demamed. Um, also together with uh, University of Girona and other partners. And um, another project where we will apply the Verde Eco now this year, we will hopefully install it uh, in, in summer, is in uh, the Houseful project. The Houseful project is focused on circular solutions on, in the building sector. So it's about using uh, resources which um, come from the, the houses and then right away locally uh, close the, the cycles. And there is a patio where we will install uh, our Verde Eco and then we will reuse the treated uh, gray water and rainwater in the nearby school. Um, then we have another demo site for this house food project where um, it, is a, it is a community, an eco village. Before it was an army center, but now it's empty. The army went out and now there's an eco village there. 
And there we also look at a, 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 at a, at a, very, at a variety of, of research streams. We are reusing the bio waste for biogas, the green clippings for a compost heater with a biomyla, which will produce heat from the microbes, which will heat the winter garden where our Verde Eco will be situated. And um, we will also then use this treated water for agriculture. So this will be um, the first pilot or full scale application where we use the Verde Eco for domestic wastewater. So the, the, the liquid section, so it has a pretreatment with septic tanks, like a four chamber tank. We already tested it in our lab, uh, in our office, but uh, yeah, this will be the first full scale application. Then we also have green wall panel systems or, or green facades or, or green walls, however you want to call them. Um, we have some systems, demo systems at our office. Um, on the left hand side is a more slim model. On the right hand side, you can see a model which can also be equipped with PV panels, uh, semi permeable PV panels, photovoltaics. Um, that th these were also developed in, as part of a new project. Then uh, our green wall is also part of an uh, outreach and dissemination action, which is uh, uh, hosted by Grünstadt Grau. It's a Viennese NGO looking to get more green facades, green roofs, green infrastructure into the city. And then again, uh, for the house food project, we have another demo site. So there are two demo sites in Barcelona, one with the Verde Eco and another one with a green wall. And again, we will use the gray and rainwater uh, of the building to treat it and reuse it for toilet flushing on site. This will also be installed this summer, hopefully. Um, we have some other uh, big EU projects where we are part of, it's the Hintrusa. There we are not responsible for uh, the wetlands, but there are, there are there's several kind of wetlands. Then there is agroforestry. And one part where we are involved as well is a solar desalination greenhouse. Um, I will uh, show you a bit more details in the next slide, I think. Yes, because for Divagri, another EU project which focuses on device, diversifying the agriculture in several agri uh, African countries, there we are also participating with so-called multifunctional constructed wetlands, where we'll put more um, focus also on, uh, of course, water we use anyway, but then also some more focus on uh, value added products, how to uh, get more value out of the plants that are used there. We will use, of course, local plants, possibly um, food crops for that aim. And then we also again have this desalination greenhouses, which should produce potable water and edible halophytes, so plants which can deal with high uh, saline uh, water, feeding water. And these greenhouses are fed with brackish or salt water from nearby. And through the enhanced evapotranspiration of the plants combined with the greenhouse and some other technologies, we hope to um, be able to produce water in a in amount that uh, makes a difference. This will be installed also um, this year or next year. Then uh, another EU project we are part of is called Water Arby. This is more about uh, agricultural runoff treatment. So there we are looking a lot into using biochar uh, with different coatings for absorbing the nutrients, uh, different uh, layering drainage systems. And uh, yeah, so you could also call them farm constructed wetlands for, for nutrient recovery. Uh, of course, you can find all these uh, projects on our website. Uh, it's on the right bottom, alchemia-nova.net. And yeah, and the vision of this project is of course to um, reuse these nutrients and, and, and find more sustainable ways to uh, run our agriculture. Then uh, that's, that's quite a nice uh, system. It's called, it's our loopy. It's a plant-based urinal. It's a bit um, uh, connected with the Baird Echo in a way that the stainless steel basins are, are similar, but uh, as you can see, they are fitted uh, onto the system, which at the moment hosts one toilet. It's only a urinal, but there should be further uh, um, uh, developments where then it's also for the so-called uh, brown water <laughs> for the poo. And, um, and at the moment it's, it's working uh, completely in a cycle. So the pee uh, is recycled for the plants and then the treated water can be, is reused again for the flushing. However, due to the salinity of the water, there is also, uh, uh, I think we have yet yeah, an ion exchange. 
um, system in there. So yeah, that was also from the climate, climate KIC. And we have the demo system now standing in a park, but it's moving around. Uh, it's also kind of like a nice R2G simulation. Um, then we also offer um, nature-based uh, consultant, uh, like consultancy and, and, and engineering for nature-based solutions. Um, now we also want a new project, where, which is um, also a new project, which covers uh, brownfield restoration as well and fit remediation. As I said before, water and nutrient cycle management is important. Um, we also look a lot into a uh, more sustainable construction sector. Um, and of course, application in cities, buildings, uh, water bodies. And yes, uh, and since the title of the webinar is, is the benefits of all of this, I made the last slide now with some benefits and challenges uh, we identified, I asked some people who are uh, already longer uh, in the projects as well. And uh, benefits of these EU projects, are of course, you're creating a network, you're getting to know more people in the field. It's a very often a very interdisciplinary consortium. So you get to know uh, a lot about also other technologies or the bigger picture. And it's very nice if you want to think in a more circular way, then it's of course very a nice opportunity to develop your technology or product further. Of course, it's a great uh, personal development as well, um, especially if you have to manage uh, such a project. Um, then of course, there are a lot of lessons learned, not only technologically, but also in terms of legal barriers that you might face when implementing these nature-based solutions. And of course, also very importantly, the economic barriers, um, yeah, which is also very important for if you want to go uh, and develop this as a product, of course. Then of course, these uh, are also very nice showcases then with the demo sites I showed you before. They are a very important part for the outreach and dissemination of the project and, and, and the solutions. And then to ideally have like, um, have this like as a front runner and then have replications for the market entry. And uh, last but not least, it's also kind of a safe space to try some crazy things and, and push the boundaries and, and be creative, of course. Uh, some challenges, of course, these are very complex networks then in consortia. Uh, there are many parts moving, many people involved. Uh, communication can be can be uh, challenging. Then, of course, uh, proposal versus reality. The what is written in the proposal often is not so easy to translate into reality. On the one hand side, the proposal should be really should be, should be something new, should be innovative, uh, should be like on the edge. But then, in the end, if you have like a limited budget and in person months and so on and so forth. Um, the resources you, you might have to uh, cut back. Um, then in the past, not fully funded projects created some problems in our case, some EU projects, they might only be funded like with 70% or whatever. And if you're not a university, which has kind of like a baseline funding from the state, then you have to find this uh, missing 30% by selling products or doing consultancy and so on and so forth. That's very important to consider for the long-term planning. And then, of course, the proposal and grant writing can be a really long and tiring process, especially if it's a two-stage EU proposal. Uh, it could take up to two years. Um, and of course, uh, it's very high competition and you have to calculate a low success rate. And again, uh, all these man hours, all these hours you spend on this uh, proposal writing, you have to kind of like, you know, pay as a company as well for. Um, and um, yeah, luckily we have a lot of uh, experience with that already. So uh, if you are a company who, 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 who wants to have some consultancy on that, we, we might be able to help you on that. And then of course, uh, with nature-based solutions, uh, it's very hard to have like a one fits all solution. So mostly they, are, they have to be tailor-made in order to consider local conditions, the local context, you know, in case of water, you know, the, the quality of the info water and so on and so forth. Last point, of course, the return on investment. Um, of course, it depends from solution to solution, but sometimes with nature-based solutions, it can be harder to have like a very good return on investment or easily calculable return on investment, especially because nowadays um, external effects, whether they are positive or negative ones, are not internalized in the, in the cost calculations of many companies or authorities who build the systems or, or give the, uh, who look for offers. So I think this is an important uh, 
for a whole um, sector that to push for also internalize these external effects and show the mostly very positive co-benefits of our nature-based solutions. Uh, yes, so I hope that gave you a kind of an overlook. As I said, that's our homepage. We are around like 20 to 25 people, very um, uh, motivated group. And uh, yeah, looking forward to your questions. Thank you, Marco. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it was a very nice presentation. I mean, it's impressive the amount of uh, projects that you are involved in. Um, all very interesting and relevant, I think, for the for this community. I would say Alchemia Nova is one of the best uh, examples of a nature-based enterprise for the amount of activity that you have involved in, with nature-based solutions. Um, so thank you. It was very nice. We will share the, the presentations uh, after the, the webinar with the, with the audience. I think there are no questions. I don't know if someone uh, would like to ask something to, to Marco. Um, they can do it directly on the chat. If not, uh, I, I was thinking about the, maybe I have a question for you. The, the Berteco solution was something that was first uh, an idea, a design that was tested and it was like a prototype during this uh, uh, European project. Is it something that is now commercialized uh, by, by the company? Yes, so um, now it's, kind of like commercialized. We already built some systems as well, just for, for private uh, customers. But of course, it's still in, in, the, in the early phases. But I would say for, for gray water, it's a product for uh, the liquid part, uh, like the liquid um, section, or like the liquid part of domestic gray water for pre-treated, um, sorry, for pre-treated domestic wastewater. I would say it's still uh, in the last pilot uh, piloting phase. Uh, wow. That's uh, that's impressive. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Marco, and thank you Thanks also so for, much for having me. Uh, please, everyone, also feel free to just send me a mail or a message via LinkedIn if you have any questions or comments. So stay in touch. Great, thank you, Marco. Thank you very much. And then, as I see, there are no more questions. Uh, I would just uh, present our next um, speaker. Um, She's Polona, Polona Pengal, joining from Slovenia, I believe. Um, she's a PhD also, uh, co-founder and scientific director of the Institute Revivo. Uh, hi, Polona, how are you? Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. It's uh, really nice to be here. <laughs> Thank you for accepting the, the invitation. Um, please, you can, you can proceed with the presentation. And I remind the audience that they can they can uh, pose any question if they would like to. Thank you, Gerardo. And hello, everyone. I will speak about reviving rivers, what is our main purpose in Reviva. And we are a bit different NGO because we do not provide products that you can sell or that you can um, provide on the market, but we actually do nature conservation. And we're using EU funds to do this. So it's probably going to be a bit different than my predecessor. So who we are, we were established in November 2015. It's a small NGO. We are usual two to three people. It really depends how successful we are with the EU project. Um, Marco explained how it is with the EU project. So it's really we are really dependent on those funds. Uh, but we also work a lot with volunteers for every and all projects that we do. And they are a great bunch of people that work for us uh, part time or full time, depending on the project that we do. And they just generally support our work. Um, our yearly budget is around 500 to 100,000 K. Um, and that, again, really depends on the available budget from the project. Now, our main activity and our main focus are aquatic ecosystems. And we see river restoration as one of the nature-based solutions that we want to use to um, restore rivers and riverine ecosystems. And for the activities that we do, we are trying to use research um, to support, on the one hand, the policy 
change that is required to restore rivers and to implement nature-based solutions. And on the other hand, to support awareness raising to, to do a bottom-up approach towards the same goal. So towards the restoration of rivers, because river restoration needs to be a local-led and locally adapted project and implementation. So both this research and education and policy then lead towards implementation. So in the research um, and uh, development projects, we use uh, funding streams from Horizon, from Biodiversa, the different European programs that support research. Then for policy, we find the most uh, useful interreg and life governance and information stream. Um, and for education and awareness raising, we use the local led development funds, which are which should be available in all countries um, and are basically cohesion fund um, finances. And lastly, for implementation, we usually apply for live projects, uh, but also sometimes for smaller kind of project, um, we also offer our services on the market. Um, Continue. So first, um, let me show you a couple of examples of Horizon projects that we did and how we used them in our work. So we applied for Horizon 2020, but um, in this programming period, the same program basically that supports research in Europe is called Horizon Europe. Uh, we were successful in applying um, two projects. One is NIAT and was completed in 2019, and the other is called Driver, which is still ongo ongoing. And I will sh just shortly explain what they're about. So NIAD is a nature insurance project, nature-based solutions. It was 23 institutions from 10 different countries working um, to understand uh, nature-based solutions benefits for risk management. In Slovenia, we focused on flood risk, but uh, in other countries, they also focused on wildlife, on wildfires management, but also avalanche and other natural risks. Um, our role in the project, we were leading the work package, one of the work packages, which was focused uh, in the demonstration sites. So we had 10 different pilot sites in which the same process was implemented um, but different parts of this process were reached because the pilots started out from different uh, levels of development. And the main point of this exercise was actually to understand how insurance sector can help us fund nature-based solutions. And then this was um, through national insurance companies was then discussed with them and we tried to develop a product, an insurance um, coverage for different kind of um, risks. And then this, the insurance sector can sell this kind of policy to, their, to, the, the, to the people that want to insure their household or their uh, company or whatever. Um, and uh, at the end, it was also, uh, a business plan for this kind of insurance was developed for each of the pilot sites. And this was basically then um, shared with the stakeholders that might be interested to take this up. In addition to, to this part, we were also leading the Slovenian demonstration site in which we were working with our own stakeholders in our capital city to try to develop a river basin management plan and this plan was offered as an alternative uh, as a nature-based solutions management plan that would use nature-based solutions to mitigate flooding in our capital city. And it was offered to the municipal authorities as a solution, as an alternative management plan to what they have currently. Now, the driver project is about drying rivers. Uh, we know that climate change will exacerbate this problem. And there is very little know, known about nature-based solutions for drying rivers. We don't really know how nature-based solutions impact or mitigate uh, drying. So this is a very um, timely project. And our role in the project is minor. We are supposed to develop a catalog of measures 
uh, because it's still ongoing, we, we have a couple of measures covered um, and uh, exemplified, and then we work with stakeholders to understand what kind of information do they, do they need to be included in the catalog so that it's the most useful for them. So we're targeting municipal and national level authorities or river basin managers, practically everybody that's involved in river management in order to show them uh, the nature-based solutions that might help their, their country or their river basin to uh, fight or to mitigate effects of drying. And so that's the part of the research that we do. So develop new ideas, new solutions, and so on. And then the second step, as I was mentioning, is transferring these solutions into policy and among the general public. And for developing policies, one very useful program or process of, uh, of the European Union is the interreg stream of projects. There are many different interreg, interreg programs available for different parts of Europe. Um, but for this one, I am presenting a case that we were in which we were working through the Danube Transnational Program, which is limited to the countries in the Danube Basin. And the project was called Measures because it was developing mitigation and restoration measures for fish migration. Uh, fish are among the most threatened species or group of species in the world. And so restoring migratory routes and river corridors for fish is one of top priorities, not only for Europe, but on a global scale. Again, this was a project of many partners, many different countries, basically all Danube Basin countries were involved. And we were working a lot with stakeholders, both local and national level, in order to, do, to develop a strategy, of which measures and where we should implement in order to restore ecological corridors and through that also restore fish populations. Uh, the final result was the strategy for the Danube, and the strategy was then um, taken up by the International Commission for the Danube, which is, which, uh, and their mandate is to implement this strategy. So this is something that now countries and stakeholders can use to develop local uh, co concrete implementation plan, uh, projects. And now, like uh, my uh, like Marco, I would also just like to quickly highlight uh, the benefits of participating in this kind of projects, but also some tips. What was helpful for us to be able to engage and get funding from this kind of proposals? Marco greatly explained the challenges, so I will not focus on those so much. Um, our main goal and motivation is reviving rivers. And in Slovenia, there's not many funds available. So what we are basically, um, the only way that we can do this is through European funds. So this was kind of the force that drove us towards the um, European funds. But once we got into the system, it was really nice experience because we, with each project, we meet so many people, we exchange so many ideas and we exchange knowledge and experience so that it's a great learning experience with every new project we get a lot of new ideas a lot of new contacts and this helps us to innovate this helps us to get to understand the solutions that other people other countries other scientists are using and we can tweak it and align it with our local cultural economic and social circumstances and that creates a new solution that's completely applicable to our own country and specific circumstances. But it's, it's something that was transferred from um, abroad just because we were involved in this project. It doesn't mean it's a result of a project. It's just something they, that you do in between, so to speak. And the how, how it's really hard, like Marco said, it's really hard to get into projects like this. And what we found most useful and working was actually three things. And they kind of go hand in hand, but 
it's like you have to do one after another. <laughs> so first, you have to understand your local situation. You have to understand your stakeholders. What challenges do they face? Because different uh, stakeholders face different challenges, but you have to find a common point across the sector. So this is basically scoping and understanding the problem. And then you need to understand and have the expertise to have ideas for solutions. You can either get this through studying and researching what others have done or through going out to the conferences, to, to uh, meetings, uh, to being in projects. Um, and, but you need to have your own idea what you want to do. And then with this idea, you go out in your network and you network by proposing ideas. You don't just go to conference and watch what others are saying, but you go there and you share your ideas with somebody else. And my experience is when you tell somebody that, oh, I would really like to do this. I think this is a very good idea. Do you have any experience with that? And it's usually that the other guy says, oh yeah, maybe we're already involved in something like this. Would you like to join or something like that? So this is how we network. This is how we get into proposals because we are so small, we cannot, we cannot lead a proposal on this scale. Maybe Marco can, they have a different kind of organization, but we are so small, we need to find a consortium and join them with, a, with just our small part with our small ideas. So this was what's working for us. Um, I don't know if it works for everybody. And just for the end, um, these are the two main European programs that we are targeting with, when we are developing projects. So it's the one source of information is the EC, the, so European Commission Funding and Tenders Portal. There you can find really basically all of the important calls for proposals through which European, Europe is funding different kind of research, development, um, consultations, tenders, everything basically is up there. And then it's the inter stream, which is focused on policy change, but it also has a lot of regional um, programs and you can find them just Googling Interreg. And that's for, all from me for now. You have my um, email and the, the webpage. So I'm open for any questions either now or later through email. Thank you. Thank you, Polana. Thank you very much. Very nice presentation as well. Um, and congratulations on the on the strategy for uh, conservation and restoration of the Danube catchment. Um, is it available? It's the publication. Yes, absolutely. I can share the link uh, in the chat. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, let me check the the chat because I think we have a question from from Tamás Gabor. Um, he's asking. Um, he said. You have mentioned your focus is uh, rivers. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned flooding and drying hydraulic quantity field primary for small and large rivers at a broad plurality at, at places and feel important. Um, quality not always, he said. Is, is quality bringing any bells in your area? And does it work? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what exactly the question is. I I think I, I understand, but uh, just feel free to put another question if I miss the answer. So uh, yes, absolutely, the the quality is our main focus, but quality is achieved through managing the environment, so the catchment, uh, the land use, the uh, the river restoration is also restoring vegetation around rivers. That that's basically quality ensuring the quality of habitats, ensuring the quality of water, because for example, repairing restoration filters the water that enters the river and vice versa. So in the nature-based solutions usually have multiple benefits and water quality and water quantity, both are benefits of nature-based solutions. So absolutely, I, I didn't really focus on the detailed um, measures that we are using, but quality is definitely one of the second or one of the most important things to think about. Okay, thank you. I thank you, Tamas, also for the for the question. Uh, 
Yeah, he said thank you. So I think. Can, I, can, I, can I have a, one minute for a question, Gerardo? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Polona, uh, we as Biofu, we are very um, experienced in Horizon 2020. I mean, today is about us uh, funding uh, or looking for some funding opportunities, but we are not uh, active in Interreg. Is mm -hmm. that Interreg, to your knowledge, more focused on NGOs, public administration, or also public companies could uh, participate? Um, all kinds of all, all kinds of institutions are eligible, but in Interreg, it's really policy-based. So you need to have at least 50% of institutions that are um, administrators, that are national public um, companies. I mean, companies, institutions. Yeah, public administrations, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But we are also able, as an NGO, we are able to participate. And I know companies are also able, but they need to be in minority. And they usually, usually have either a consultation or implementation role. So to test the or to comment or to complement the policy that they are changing. Mm -hmm. Or we can also propose a policy to be changed, but we need to have a partner from the institutional, from the public sector. Okay, thank you. I mean, it's good to know because I, I know that some of us and some of the members of the community are uh, working closely with public administrations and they could maybe mm -hmm. even uh, propose to make a joint project yep. to go for funding, you know, to get some funding for an implementation mm -hmm. uh, in the plane of interest. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, um, that's our experience to join up with an administration and then it works. Cool. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you again, Polona, for You're welcome. Uh, being with us today. Um, thank you. Now it's uh, time to move to our uh, third and last uh, speaker, Alan Petitjean. Alan is a PhD and research associate at Ecobert, which is uh, based in France. And it is also one of the nature-based enterprises registered in the community. Um, Alan, are you there? How are you? Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm fine, Hi, thank, Alan. You. <laughs> thank you very much for... Um... Invite, inviting us. Uh, thank you, Antonia, also. Um, it's very nice to be here. Uh, I do replace uh, my colleague Thomas Auron, which was unable to, to make it now. So I'm going to present. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Yes. Do you see my screen? It's OK. Oh. Yeah, now it's uh, full screen. Super. Thank you very much. So yes, um, so I am research engineer at EcoBird, and um, I'm going to talk about uh, some project, some European projects that, that we are involved in. Uh, first, a few words about us. Uh, so we are uh, an engineering office. So we do studies, process, automatism, and programming for for uh, <clears throat> treatment processes, mainly treatment uh, wetlands, which are considered uh, as uh, nature-based solutions. And uh, we are the, the technical back office for the Santa, our mother company, and some other partners. We uh, usually usually do uh, cost-benefit studies, capex effects reports. And we also have a re research and development uh, unit which is uh, accredited, dated in, in France to, and it allows us to, to, to do research for bigger companies about their uh, treatment processes. Uh, and we also uh, develop map partnerships with public research bodies. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, the, we deal with wastewater, but different kind of wastewater. We have domestic wastewater. But also urban runoff. Uh, we uh, we study uh, also reuse aspects of these uh, wastewaters, and we also uh, deal with industrial wastewater, mainly agri food industry wastewaters. So uh, for today, uh, regarding European uh, pro projects that we have, we have three uh, three of them. Uh, the first is in text, and it deals with domestic wastewater for small communities, and also deals with reuse aspects of this treated wastewater. And we also have two others 
uh, European projects. One is H2020 NICE, and uh, the other one is Another Life at Sorb. And these two projects uh, are um, more about the uh, treatment of urban runoff and combined sewer, sewer overflow uh, treatments. So first, a few words about uh, Life Index. Uh, it's uh, about uh, inno uh, innovative, hybrid, intensive, and extensive treatment technology. Nature-based solutions are uh, most of the time uh, extensive treatment technologies. And uh, as, uh, as a company, we also work uh, on how to intensify a bit these technologies. Uh, 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 and so uh, this project uh, is a kind of benchmark. With, uh, we have uh, 30 pilot uh, scale treatment units uh, and, uh, with a wide range of uh, <clears throat> different technologies uh, that are in two sites in Spain. And it's high tier TRL uh, treatment uh, pilots. And the, the focus of this uh, project is, uh, is domestic wastewater from small communities where uh, NB, NBS are uh, specifically uh, suited. So here with this project, the, the innovations are more about development of uh, our latest technologies and also the combinations with other technologies. So we are responsible, we are responsible for the treatment wetland uh, part of this system, uh, we have about uh, 10 pilots of, of different treatment wetland configurations, uh, which is very, very nice with this uh, project is the benchmark approach. We, we, can, we can compare a wide range of different uh, technologies for small communities. Also reuse aspects and also we can, we can compare uh, the, the, uh, the technology uh, with the, the life cycle assessment. So uh, the <clears throat> project started in uh, 2019 and uh, now the pilots are almost done and we are uh, just um, looking forward the, 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 the first uh, waters on, on them. Uh, just to have a small summary of what we, what kind of pilots that we have in the life index we have uh, the classical French system, the classical flow concentrated wetland, which is the French NPS, which is now internationally recognized. And uh, we have uh, the classical two stages, which which is uh, uh, which was set as a demonstrator, but also control for other new newer technologies. Uh, uh, for instance, Rhizosphere, which is our, uh, our newest technology, which is uh, a combination uh, of the classical French uh, treatment wetland that accepts raw wastewater, but which is intensified with a uh, forced bed aeration at the bottom of the system. So uh, the goal is to to uh, uh, enhance this technology to and also to to see. What about the reuse aspects for this technology? What is possible to do with it? With it? Um, and also, uh, we have the possibility, which is very nice, to to, to test uh, our technologies with a different effluent, which is uh, partially treated uh, uh, wastewater uh, by uh, uh, a flow anaerobic uh, sludge bed. Uh, it's a push technology, which uh, by by our partner Aqualia. And uh, we will test uh, this uh, effluent with two different uh, treatment wetlands, one classical French vertical and, uh, and uh, narrated a forced bed aeration uh, treatment wetland. Now moving on to the life absorb, absorb <coughs> project. Uh, here it's about rainwater and runoff treatments. So it's urban runoff and also combined through sewer of flow treatment wetland and it's about the implementation uh, of an uh, innovative solutions for the treatment of runoff uh, and uh, specifically to uh, to reduce the um, uh, emerging contaminants micropollutants from storm water and uh, the idea is here is that we have a, a <clears throat> real scale pilot uh, so, I will, as I said, uh, it's about runoff and uh, combined sewer overflow uh, treatments and uh, 
big yearly uh, volume. And our implication in the project is uh, about uh, the numerical modeling of the, of the filters in order to better understand the, the main processes that occur in these kinds of, uh, of uh, treatment wetlands and also optimize the, the design and operation of these kinds of systems. And we also have uh, the H2020 NICE project. So here also, <clears throat> so it's, it's a big, it's a bigger, uh, project uh, of our project that, that uh, we are involved in but we have we have a, a small part in it uh, but the overall pro project project deals with the 11 urban they how they they call them uh, urban real labs that that are in seven different countries we have 14 partners and uh, yes, the, the, the labs, they, they deal with wastewater, but also rainwater runoff, uh, combined to overflow and river water. Uh, <clears throat> here, uh, we uh, test uh, a different configuration of our, uh, our, of our intensified uh, wetland, which is uh, sketched here. And we are responsible for, the, for, for two pilots uh, in Lyon for the construction and design of uh, these two uh, pilot and the demonstrator. And uh, we also are responsible for, uh, for uh, four demonstrators in, in dance and uh, in Spain. So here, uh, what we test is, so the intensification of our systems, but also uh, bio-augmentation and uh, uh, specific reactive materials to remove uh, and to re remove the specific pollutants. Voilà. Uh, in order to, to summarize uh, what are the main outcome, outcomes for EcoBird, uh, they are, uh, 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 yes, first I agree with um, Polen and Marco what they, they, they said about, about the outcomes of the European projects were very, you know, very interesting. So to us, it's uh, the, 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 the most uh, outcomes are scientific and technical uh, to better understand our systems. And also uh, in a multidisciplinary approach, approach as, 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 as said uh, Marco, it's the truth. And uh, <clears throat> also have new uh, designs, have new ideas to have new designs and optimizations of our systems. Uh, and mostly uh, uh, via modeling tools and uh, uh, also uh, outcomes are uh, yes uh, some visibility and uh, also demonstrating what, what, what uh, nature-based solutions can do for the, the um, wastewater treatment uh, and in different kind of countries uh, different countries. Oh, also, uh, yes, uh, the networks um, to, to get new ideas and new, uh, new perspectives. Uh, as challenges, uh, I would add that um, for, uh, for a company, uh, it's uh, sometimes difficult to, to assess the, the time that is necessary to, to uh, deal with administrative and uh, financial reporting of, uh, of uh, bigger uh, EU uh, projects. And uh, I'm open to for every question if you have and you can uh, either ask one, me one question or uh, contact either Thomas or me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. Thank you very much for the, for the presentation. Um, I enjoyed it very much. I hope the, the audience uh, did too. I mean, in such a short time, it's nice to see the amount of uh, different nature-based solutions that uh, each of you have been presented today, like more products-based, but also services. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, you served uh, as inspiration for, for some of the participants here today. I hope so. <laughs> Let me see. I think uh, there are no questions. So I don't know if someone would like to ask something to, to Alan regarding the different projects. Perhaps I have a question. Um, when I was uh, looking at the nice diagrams that you prepared with the wetlands in the, 
in the Intex project, in the live project. You said one of the goals of the, of the project was to reuse the treated wastewater. Which kind of use have uh, you have in mind? Which type of application you have uh, for the treated uh, wastewater? Uh, yes, but now, uh, yes, now there, are, there is a new urban uh, regulation that is, uh, is going to be set up uh, in the few years, but uh, mainly uh, there are uh, uh, agricultural uh, uses for the, for the treated wastewater and uh, with different standards of quality that are uh, de depending on the, the type of culture uh, that, uh, that we want to to irrigate and uh, to avoid any risks uh, for human health. And um, what we want to see here with the uh, aerated systems is uh, how uh, how we, we can reduce the, the pathogenic uh, contamination that we have in wastewaters, which are the main uh, parameters that they, the regulation wants to, to limit. Uh, is it okay? Is it okay for you? Sure. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much for the. Because we know we know already uh, quite well uh, what classical systems can do, and we have hints that the the intensified uh, systems can uh, can provide better um, pathogenic uh, removal than the the classical systems. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Very nice uh, answer. <laughs> All clear. Um, super. Then I think uh, we are running running out of time. If uh, someone would like to ask something, we still have a few minutes uh, left. Um, I will just uh, share my screen once more. Um, I hope you can see now. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I think it's time to to conclude the the webinar. Um, uh, before uh, I continue, because I would like to give you a few uh, closing remarks, I would like to thank uh, once more our three speakers today, Marco Polona and Alan, uh, for joining us today and, and sharing your experience and your views on this uh, interesting topic. I hope the rest of participants uh, also enjoy the, the session and learned uh, from your projects and hopefully this will bring a lot of uh, networking opportunities and collaboration for for all of us. Um, and uh, yeah, finally, I would like to um, I would like to inform you about uh, a few interesting events coming up. I hope uh, you can see my screen now. Yeah. So the first one is uh, a nature nature based uh, solutions pitch fest, which is uh, co organized with the nature of cities. Uh, um, initiative and we are now looking for startups and nature-based solutions uh, ideas to solve uh, different challenges and there will be amazing prices for the best solutions so i encourage all of you to present your ideas the deadline to submit uh, your ideas your proposal is the 18th of march then we have the Connecting Nature mobile road show during the month of April with several stops at different European cities in France, in Italy, Austria, Switzerland, Germany and Belgium. And there you will see and learn from key innovations and outputs developed during the Connecting Nature project. So please check the website and you can get more information there and hopefully we will see you there in person. And last but not least, uh, we would like to invite you to register and join our Connecting Nature Impact Summit, which is organized in a hybrid format in person and online from the 20th of April to the 1st of May in Genk, Belgium. And the registration is now open and available on the website. So again, we look forward to seeing you there. And I believe this is all from my side. Um, I would like to thank you again for joining us today. It was a pleasure to, to hear from the three of you. And also thank you to all the- Thank you very much people that for inviting. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. Thanks everybody for listening in. <laughs> Thanks, have a nice thank you. afternoon. Take care. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thanks, bye -bye. goodbye. Bye-bye.
拜。